Angelica, you're here. Yay. Hey, everybody. I can't remember. I think they talked about it, though, last week on our team call. I can't remember when they talked about it. It sounds vaguely familiar, but I totally, yeah, I wouldn't have known had you not sent me the link. So thank you. Okay, great. So Tyler, make sure we just send that one last email blast. Make sure everyone got the new link we're using moving forward. And then um, I have a nice little presentation I want to go through. It's called scaling from zero to seven figures. Has anyone ever attended that training of mine? Um, I want to make sure I'm not being repetitive for everyone. Uh, but it's going to give everyone a really good macroeconomics of how to start their business moving forward for the new year. And then we'll get into the business planning strategy session where we'll break down how many contacts you need to go out there and build your business, uh, daily routines, um, and how to maximize everything as far as efficiency goes um, to go out there and, and really get to where you want to get to. Um, and I will be sharing the video after the, uh, the training with the slides so that if anyone wants to go ahead and revisit the information, um, they'll have that good to go. But um, I'm going to be giving away my email newsletter template. Um, so is Ricky. And um, our resources are your resources. So Ricky, whenever you're ready, I'm good to go. No, absolutely, man. Thank you for that. Uh, welcome, guys. Good morning. So um, let's dig in. Um, I'm going to kind of cover more kind of what you should be thinking about mindset, that kind of thing. And then Juan's going to come in and help you more with the, this, the structure side of things. Let me mute everybody. All right. So I'd like to maybe dig into, you know, a good 10, 15 minutes here. And then maybe answer maybe one or two questions before Juan comes on. All right. Still got a few people coming in. Cool. So let me just start by saying, I believe that 2022 is going to be the most incredible year for each and every one of us. Okay. For many, many reasons. Um, let's just start with the personal reasons. Number one, I think that all of you have um, built your personal development up to the point where you pretty much know what you need to do. Like, I believe that most of us here know what we need to do. You're on this call because you're, you're searching for the answers of what to do. And you've probably seen so many different things to do. Um, and, and my thoughts are that you have tried many things and narrowed it down to the few things that really work well for you. Okay, let's just assume that that's where you are. And if that's not where you are, that needs to be the goal to try everything you can and narrow down to the things that really work well for you. I think one big problem that we have right now that we face, especially as newer agents trying to find our way in the business, is all the different directions people are trying to pull us in. All the different directions people are trying to pull us in, do this, do that, you should do this. What about this? Facebook ad says I should do this. This coach says that. My broker says this. And then it's all, a lot of it's conflicting, right? A lot of it has you very confused about what you should really do. You really need to tune out most of that, right? And really keep it down to the most basic, simple things that you can possibly do, right? If you realize uh, the most successful people out there make things seem really simple. Like I, I break things down and, and teach you guys how I sell hundred properties a year. And it sounds like really simple, right? And the, the people that, that make it seem really simple, you can pick those people out of a crowd as some of the most successful people out there because they keep things simple. And the people that make things super complicated, right? Super complicated. It, 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 they're less successful because they got too much going on. <laughs> they're making problems for themselves, And now everything's super complicated. It doesn't have to be complicated. It is really tough to work through all the different lead generation sources and follow up um, paths and, and marketing and personal branding. It's really tough to cipher through all the different things. But at the end of the day, you've got to go that through that little bit of pain for a year or two to really figure out and get your footing on what really works well for you. Let's assume that that's where you guys are. We're at a place in our business where we kind of know what works well for us moving forward. Even if not, let's say you've at least done a couple deals, maybe in your third or fourth year and you've done 20 deals this year, whatever the case may be, wherever you are right this second, everything that you've done up to this point is literally the foundation for 2022. You can only get better from here. 2022 is going to be better than 2021, no matter what. That's the personal side of things. On the business side and the, the, the market-wise, 
Okay. I want you guys to realize something. Okay. As Juan tells you, and you start thinking about your goals and you start mapping out what you want to do and how you want to do it and what the equation looks like behind how many leads you need to, to get this many deals. And this is how we're going to end up at the end of the year. I want you to realize that the market. Okay. This is, I want, this is my big takeaway for me to you today. Okay. If you haven't heard me say this before, the market itself, the ebbs and flows, the supply and demand, the number of listings, number of transactions, interest rates, um, you know, crashes, you know, if, if prices jump up 20% again, whatever the market does, okay, that has nothing to do with your success as a real estate agent. You need to keep the market itself, okay, completely separated, like way on the other side of the room, right, from the actual success of your business. Because what you have to realize is that Regardless of what the market does over here, the market is always going to move in your favor to keep transactions going. For example, if the market crashes really big, okay, let's just say prices drop 50%, something crazy. The reason why prices drop 50% is because that's the new price that people are willing to pay, which means what? The market moves in a manner that keeps transactions going constantly, every day. The, mar the market is mother nature. Think of market as mother nature. Okay, like an ocean, right? An ocean does whatever it needs to do to keep the currents running, keeps waves crashing, right? It never fails. Waves are going to crash every single day. Think of waves as closings. And, and, and the, the ocean is the market. And the market's going to do whatever it has to do to keep moving, to keep those waves crashing. Okay, think of it in that manner, all right? And realize that closings are going to happen every day for the rest of your life, no matter what the market does. So. What does that tell us? We need to keep the market separated from our business. Yeah, pay attention to the market. Know what the market's doing. Know where prices are, interest rates, whatever, okay? So that we can advise our clients best through the market. But understand in 2022, as we go into it and we look at our goals and halfway through the year, something happens in the market that, you know, that this twist and turn we never saw coming and it scares everybody half to death. You got to realize that that has nothing to do with you continuing to be an agent that closes deals every day. All right. So as Juan's helping you through mapping out the, the fundamentals and the strategy and, you know, the foundation here for what you need to be thinking about in terms of building your, your goals and kind of re -engine, re reverse engineering how many closings you want to have, so on and so forth. Have it in the back of your mind that if we run into a pandemic here, like 2020, when we started the beginning of the, the, the decade, like on fire, like this is the new, the new decade, everything's going to be incredible. And then all of a sudden, boom, the pandemic hit and everybody's like, wait a minute, what, what the hell just happened? The same thing could happen to us this year or any year. Okay. But what you got to realize is look at the pandemic and look during the, the, the worst part of that pandemic, the, the 45 day complete shutdown and how many closings were happening every single day and how many properties were going under contract. People were writing offers and negotiating and ratifying deals, right? So the business never stops. So don't allow the business to affect your business. Like, like when the market goes down, um, that shouldn't, you, you shouldn't have that directly correlated to your business. Does that make sense? The market is not correlated to your success as a real estate agent. I hate, I, I don't hate it. I, I feel bad for it. I'm empathetic towards agents who, who say, man, we had a tough year this year. You know, inventory was just really low. <laughs> and I'm thinking, well, inventory is going to be high next year. You're going to be the same agent that tells me next year. It's a really tough year, too much inventory, right? These agents that make excuses and blame everything on the market are going to continue to find reasons in the market that they're not successful and closing the amount of deals they want to close. Meanwhile, we had only 2% less transactions as a country, 2% less, but pr prices were up double digits. So the double digit in price, in price increase more than compensated for the 2% less transactions we had because we make money on commission based on price, right? So in theory, they should have made more money even if they sold the same amount of properties because prices are higher. Right. But, but transactions were down 2%. So if their transactions were down 2%, if they sold 98 instead of 100, but prices are up 10%, then they made more money. But here they are blaming the market, saying inventory is tight and sellers don't want to sell because they don't leave money on the table. And we're writing five, five contracts for every buyer, not getting anything. Meanwhile, closings are happening all around them. And the problem is pipeline. 
They don't have enough active and buyers at any given time. They're working with four buyers, four buyers or sellers. You need 15 to 20 active buyers and sellers to close one deal a week. And you got you to gotta maintain that number and cultivate that number and nurture that number. If you have 15 to 20, you're going to close one a week. If you have 25 plus, you're going to close two a week. It's really simple math. It really comes down to simple math. And you're either going to use the market as an excuse or you're going to use it as leverage to go out there and close the exact number of deals you want to close every year. So you guys know all my philosophies and different stuff and story and all that. I'll just end with saying that um, next week, I'm going to release my new 60 day challenge. So I'm doing away with my 90 day action plan. Actually, zero to diamond.com will be a social media platform that you can create a profile post on your wall, tag people, DM people on the platform, so on and so forth. And it'll be a new 60 day challenge attached to that social media platform. Um, the current zero to diamond site you see today will cease to exist. And I'm releasing that next week so that you guys can gear up and use that starting January 1st, if you so choose. All right. And, um, that's it for me. Do you guys have any questions? I'll take two questions if you guys got it before we dive into to Juan's segment. Let's see. Yeah, I would check the chat as well. Yeah, there's a lot of questions going on in there. Chat. Let's see what we got. Let's see what we got. Uh, let's see. Um, let's see. Okay, let's see. Excited for the new challenge. Started making calls to work on the butterflies. Hey, that that's a really good point, guys. Listen, winners, you're, you're, you're never going to stop a winner from winning. Okay? And you're not going to stop a loser from losing. If a loser is going to go out there and blame the market, they're going to continue to find ways to blame the market over and over and over and over again. There's nothing you're going to do to change their mind. All right. Maybe something they hear on a podcast changes their mind or there's so much information out there in personal development. They haven't dove in and realized what's going on in the real world outside of their bubble where they can't control anything. They're just going to continue to lose, 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 lose. Right. And the winners, no matter what you tell them, they're going to go out there and win. Right. They're going to realize, OK, the only thing between me and a million dollars a year over the next three to five years are just thousands of one-on-one -on -one conversations with people in my market. Give me a phone and give me a list of phone numbers. I'm about to make these thousands of one-on-one -on -one conversations happen now. That's what a winner does. They don't say, oh, and it's okay to have butterflies. I'm not saying I have butterflies. I mean, I still got butterflies, different things I do, right? You always got to push yourself outside of that comfort zone or you're never going to grow. You're never going to become that better version of yourself. I got a challenge for you guys in 2022. Here's a challenge. 22 books in 22. You need to read 22 books in 2022. Right? I think the I think the um I think the average uh CEO reads like one book a month, right Juan? Is that true? CEO one book a month. One book a week. A week. One book a week, okay? Yeah. So 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 well there you go, right? I'm reading four books right now. I've got a goal to have them all done by January 1st. And then I'm moving right into four more. Um, you guys need to, need to, right? It's, several things happen. Your mind gets sharper. You learn stuff. You, if you want to become better, okay, the, a better version of yourself so that you can do more and accomplish more, be more successful, you've got to grow out of the person that you are. And the only way to do that is to go, get around people who are doing bigger things, right? Well, we can't call, you know, Jeff Bezos and Oprah and, you know, Jim Collins and Tom Brady, we can't like call and hang out with these people, but we can read books that get inside their minds, right? And getting inside their minds through books is, is, is very similar to hanging out with them to a certain degree. Um, and it gets you that if that's as close as you can get to some of these incredibly um, massive business leaders in the industry, then that's what you need to do. So it makes your mind sharp. It makes you feel like you actually have hung around some of these you know, people that are on these much higher levels and it elevates your game. Okay. 22 books in 22. But as far as the butterflies, listen, a winner is just going to say, give me the butterflies. Where's the butterflies at? Give me a butterfly net. I'm going to catch these butterflies. That's what a winner says. Where's the butterflies?
I had to kind of end with that, guys. Kind of like, in, you know, where's the butterflies? Boom. So, <laughs> Ricky, can I just uh, share my screen? Okay, we're good to go. Any last questions for Ricky before we get going? We're going to need 45 minutes start to finish for the entire training. There will be Q&A afterwards. Um, so I want to make sure everyone is good to go before we square away. And if you have a pen and paper in front of you, I know it's a little old school, but it's going to help I, you out. We're going to be going through 100 slides. I, I, have, a, I have a question. Ayub, yes. Yes. Uh, so I actually listen to a lot of audiobooks. And what I heard is that in order to get everything from that book, you need to read it at least 16 times. Right? Okay, That's yeah. what I heard. Okay. So now uh, in the challenge of 2022, is it okay if I'm uh, re-listening those books over and over? That's to up grasp? to you. That's up to you. No. So my, my question is like, it, it, it doesn't have to be new book. Uh, well, here's the can, thing. Well, here, here's the thing. Like, I'm not judging people. I'm not giving awards out. This is just for my challenge for me to you. If you want to read the same book 22 times and you say you accomplished it, that's fine by me. I'm not making rules for this. People are right. different and they absorb information differently. And so I can't say, no, you got to read 22 new books, right? Because you might take two books and read them both 11 times and get way more out of those two books than you would if you read 22 separate books. So I sense. can't, I'm not going to tell you, you can't do that. Right. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Ricky. I got a quick question. Okay. Uh, I'm about to finish my 90 days. Uh, so and should I wait for the new 60 day before I schedule a call with you? No, just email me. We'll hop on a call. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Cool. No, I enjoyed it, guys. Juan, it's all yours. Ready to go. All right. Let's whip out the pen and paper. And let's bring the energy up because I'm in Atlantic City and I'm trying to get lucky this weekend on the roulette table. No, I'm just kidding. But I have been here for 48 hours and I already got three leads and recruited one agent. So everything that you're about to learn on this actual training, you can apply into your life and your business immediately. And you could go ahead and apply it into 2022 when it comes to restructuring your business the right way, okay? So this training is going to be called How to Scale Your Real Estate Business from Zero to Seven Figures, even if you have no idea how to get started. I don't care if you're a brand new agent. I don't care if you've been in this business for 10 years. I guarantee there's something you're going to be able to take away. So if at any point you have any questions, go ahead and put them into the chat, and we will answer them at the end. Let's get started. A little about me. My name is Juan Carlos, and I am based out of New York City. Um, I've been in real estate for five years, uh, three years with EXP. In 2021, I was actually given the Icon Award. Um, my specialty is residential real estate and luxury real estate. We are dabbling into commercial as well. And I have a passion for helping others, traveling, and building businesses. What you're going to discover on this training is the following. Secret number one, the law of millionaire agents. Secret number two, the real estate sales formula and how to use it. Secret number three the 1% rule and why it matters. And secret number four, the scaling formula and how to get to seven figures, okay? So are you a real estate agent working with people looking to buy or sell real estate? And if you're not, this probably isn't the training for you. Are you tired of having that feeling of uncertainty, wondering where your next deal is going to come from? Do you wanna learn how the top agents, including Ricky, in the country are generating qualified clients every single week. In this training, I'm gonna show you how my team redefined generating leads and how I used it to scale to seven figures in gross annual commissions. The best part is I would have made my entire business and I work less than fewer than five hours per week. Now, I know that may sound insane or even unrealistic, but the way I achieved it is actually pretty simple. I'll tell you more about that in a second, but first, let me tell you why I made this training, who I am, and how I created a system to scale from zero to seven figures. So the reason I made this training is because the way I designed my real estate business has drastically changed my income and improved my work-life balance. And I know it could do the same exact thing for you. So in a few moments, I'm going to share this system with you. And once you see it, you'll have two options. 
A, you could do nothing, which I hope it's not the option you take, or B, you could apply the principles from this training and use them to change your business forever. And I'm not exaggerating. So who am I? My name is Juan Carlos Baronetti. And simply put, me and Ricky help real estate agents get more clients and scale their business. These are some of the publications I've been featured on. And my whole claim to fame is I've been able to scale my revenue share group alongside with Ricky from zero to 900 agents in three years. Ricky actually did it in just about a year and a half. I've also been involved in the sale of more than $100 million worth of real estate in the last three years alone. I've also been able to scale my social media to more than 300,000 followers. Right here, you're going to find both of my handles. I have a business page, which is called Gold Bar, and I have a personal page, which is called Juan Gold Bar. And essentially, I leverage these pages, not just for going out there and getting clients, but for recruiting agents as well. Right here, you're going to see the analytics of my gold bar page. And as you can see, we reach anywhere between one to one and a half million people per week, every single week, just through impressions. So what's the future for me? Very simply put, I want to hit a billion dollars in real estate sales. I want to grow to 10,000 agents worldwide, which I'm confident me and Ricky will do with along our team in the next three to four years. And I want to help as many agents in the process to what I've learned. Because at the end of the day, making money is phenomenal. However, what's it all worth if we're not helping people in the process? So what is my secret? And if you want to know what it comes down to in just one word, get ready to write this down. Leverage. Who here knows what leverage is? Go ahead and type it into the chat. I want to hear what your definition of leverage is. Leverage for me is leveraging systems and people to go out there and automate and scale your business. Right here, I'm showing you a screenshot of my infrastructure that took me three years to build that consists of people and systems helping me out when it comes to every part of my business. And this includes social media and marketing, admin and operations, and even sales and cold calling. And I did this all through virtual assistants. However, I did hire local staff as well, and we'll get into that in a second. Now, we all have to start somewhere. And day one for me was at a company called Keller Williams Real Estate. Right here is a picture of me actually putting a screenshot of March of 2016 when I went on Facebook and announced to all of my friends from high school, hey, I'm in real estate, come send me some deals. Now, unfortunately, they didn't really care much because they didn't send me much business. When I got my license, I was just graduating college and I was told that the best way to go out there and grow a successful real estate business was to focus on working with sellers. Who's heard that before? I'm sure we all have. Now, whoa, hold up one second. My entire slide just got destroyed. No, don't worry. We're going we're gonna to find our way back. Where were we? Right here. We're all good to go. We're back. So when I got my license, I was graduating college and I was told that working with sellers is the fastest way to go out there and grow your business. Now, the only issue with this was that my personal circle was full of young college students who were just graduating and none of them owned homes. My first year in real estate, I worked more than 80 hours a week just to end up making less than $6,000 for the entire year. I think Ricky went out there in his entire first year. Ricky, I think you closed what? Was it two homes? Yeah, four homes. Four homes. So he did four times as better as I did. But I want to have everyone understand if you've been in real estate for at least one or two years and you're not doing nearly as well as you want to be, it's okay. As long as you're doing better than the year before, and you're continuing to grow, that's all that matters. And I'll show you why in a sec. One day I came across an agent who had just won the award for number one agent in my entire Keller Williams office. And this was ranked by sales volume. And when I came across him, I said, hey, what is your secret? And I literally asked him, Alex, what is your secret? And what he told me next, I would never forget. Juan, there is no secret. Monday through Friday, I circle prospect the same zip code, three hours a day, asking homeowners if they want to sell. Does that sound familiar? Like someone on this call? Eventually, you will find someone that says, yes, selling real estate is a numbers game. This completely shifted my paradigm. And I realized that in order to be successful, I needed to build a business focused on prospecting as many potential sellers as possible. So secret number one, the law of millionaire agents, everyone write this down. And yes, that is my virtual doppelganger in the top or the bottom left corner of the screen. So has anyone here heard of the law of thermodynamics? It's referenced a lot when it comes to biology. Well, this law goes ahead and in summary, states that the energy that you put into a system equals the energy that comes out. 
So I decided to create my own law and I call it the law of millionaire agents. As you may know, me and Ricky have a podcast and I've been in this business for five years interviewing the top agents all across the country. And there's one thing that they share in common and what they share in common are the ABCs. So A is going to be prospecting. Has anyone noticed that when you prospect consistently, I'm talking one, two, three hours a day, it naturally leads to more follow-ups. And has anyone noticed that when you follow up with people consistently over a long period of time, it naturally leads to more consultations? Yes, more buyer presentations and more listing presentations. And has anyone noticed that when they go on more listing presentations, they get more listings? Isn't that weird how all of this is connected? Well, you have the law right in front of you. If you want to go out there and get more listings, you need to prospect more, okay? And I'm not talking about prospecting an hour a week or an hour a day. You need to make that a daily routine of prospecting two to three hours a day. And what is prospecting? Well, I'll explain that in a second as well. My second year in the business, I decided I would get serious about prospecting sellers on the phone every single day. And the end result was me going from $6,000 in gross commissions in year one to more than a quarter million dollars in GCI in year two. Right here is the plaque to show proof that the double gold award at Keller Williams was awarded to teams that made between two hundred forty dollars to $300,000 a year in gross commissions. And my team won that award. Well, look at this. By my third year, I had so many buyer leads coming in for my listings that I decided to start hiring buyer agents to help me with additional clients. But I ran into one major issue. And that issue was that I never realized that hiring other agents to work for me would also force me to inherit other responsibilities. These responsibilities included training and supporting the agents, marketing and branding for those agents, and transaction management. So very first tip, when you hire salespeople without an admin in place, you become the admin, okay? So I don't care how busy you are. I don't care how many open houses and how many buyer leads you have. Never hire salespeople before you hire an admin first, okay? Well, when I went out there and hired buyers, buyer agents to go out there and work with all of my buyers that I had before I had an admin, it ended up reducing the amount of hours I could focus on prospecting sellers. And naturally, because of the ABCs, less prospecting led to me getting less listings. And if I didn't have enough listings, it meant I wouldn't be able to support my team. If I didn't take action and build an infrastructure to support them, everything would come crashing down. And it's not a good thing. So I decided to take action. And it took me an entire six months of struggling to get the hang of things. But once I created the right system, I was able to start generating five to 10 closings every single month. And I still do year to date. Year to date, I'll probably end off with around 140 transactions. Now, what caused this shift in my business? Once again, it was leverage. Second time you're hearing this, okay? Must be important. Originally, when I began selling real estate, I was doing all the work myself. If you look at this, this is a little post I took from NAR outlining some of the things that we do as realtors. And does this look familiar? Well, if it does, it's because you're doing everything and more. I think this is actually maybe half of the stuff that we actually do. But it's almost impossible to go out there and build a successful business if you're juggling so many hats. So any single time I landed a new listing, all of my income producing activities had to pause so I could focus on servicing the client. Have you realized that when you go out there and you generate a new buyer or a new listing, instead of you continue to prospect two to three hours a day, you kind of have to put those things on pause to go out there and actually show these houses and negotiate these properties. It's normal. And this is the consistent issue that realtors run into. So in business, we call this a bottleneck effect. It's one of the major reasons why some real estate agents can't successfully scale their business past a certain level. And I want everyone to give me a hands up uh, or a thumbs up um, if this is something that you've personally experienced in your business. So there are three main income producing activities that make you money, okay? These activities include, number one, prospecting, aka building relationships. Ricky said, make this simple. So we're gonna make this as simple as possible. Number two, follow-up, aka nurturing those relationships. And number three, buyer and seller consultations aka converting those relationships. These are the only three things that you should be focusing on. Anything outside of this is not making you money. And you may be saying, but Juan, when I show houses, I make money. Well, the showings are a byproduct of you doing consultations. But at the end of the day, 
These are the three direct activities that put money in your pocket. Now, if you do these activities daily, they will naturally lead to more signed clients and more signed clients lead to more showings and offers and more showings and offers. Well, they lead to more deals. And if you close more deals, you're going to be like this guy counting all of your Benjamins, right? Isn't that what we all want? So secret number two, the real estate sales formula. And once again, my virtual doppelganger is telling you to write this down. This is very important. So the real estate sales formula is defined as the following. The number of leads you have multiplied times how well you convert those leads equals the number of signed clients you have. So very simply put, if you want to go out there and sign more clients, well, you have two options. Increase the number of leads you have or get better at converting them. Super simple. You can't mess it up, right? Well, we run into one other issue. 99% of real estate agents have the wrong definition of a lead. You don't believe me? Everyone go ahead and type in into the chat what they define a lead as. And we have 73 people on this call. I'm not going to stop till I get at least 10 answers. So right now, go ahead and type in your definition of a lead. Someone ready to buy or sell. A prospect. Someone buying in the next 90 days. Someone you are actively working with. A person interested in buying or selling. Someone who wants to buy or sell. Any person you can foster a relationship with in the future. A human being. Someone I have a contract with. Someone you know who knows people. A poten Do you all, does everyone see my point? We're going out there and chasing leads, yet no one's even defined what a lead is. Everyone has their own definition in their mind. So when you go out there to Zillow, or when you go out there to Op City, or when you go out there to the next technology company offering you these leads, and you get disappointed, do you know why you're disappointed? It's because your expectation of a lead was different from theirs, okay? So most agents define a lead as the following. Someone that wants to buy or sell real estate. However, we're going to read a final lead for the purpose of this training and the purpose of your business moving forward. A lead moving forward is a relationship. Okay, let's say that again. A lead is a relationship. And in order to build a relationship with someone, you need to get their name, their contact information, which means their email and their phone number, and maybe their social media. And number three, you need to have rapport with that person. They need to know that you sell real estate. So moving forward, we're going to have a new script for everyone, whether it's your Uber driver, your cashier at your local grocery store, the waitress at the restaurant, your financial advisor. You're going to ask them a simple five-word sentence. Do you have a realtor? And you would know what 99.999% of every single person in your marketplace is going to say, no. Why? Because people don't look for a realtor until they need one. So you know how you're going to follow up? You're going to say a five-word sentence. Can I be your realtor? That's it. You don't have to go out there and pay thousands of dollars a month in coaching for scripts and objection handling. I just give everyone the secret sauce. Do you have a realtor? Can I be your realtor? Moving forward, that is your script. And if they say, sure, you say, wonderful. What's your name and contact info? And I'll send you my information via email first thing tomorrow. Boom. So once you redefine what a lead is, you start to realize that every single human being in your marketplace has the potential to become a future lead. And we're going to do a quick little quiz to make sure everyone's paying attention. If I gave you the option to work with buyer A or buyer B, which one would you prefer? And I want Ricky to answer this as well, because I'm curious how he answers this. So buyer A is pre-approved. They have a budget of half a million dollars, and their time frame to buy is going to be in the next 90 days. Buyer B is not pre-approved. Their budget is $700,000 and their time frame to buy is over the next three years. Which one do you prefer to work with if I were to give you these two options? What's wrong, what's wrong with either, man? They both look good. So Ricky's saying both. A lot of people saying A. A lot of people saying both. Mickey said B. Mickey, I applaud you. You're the only one that said B. I like both. You're in this for the long run. Let's see. Let's see. If I had to choose, hmm, they're basically the same, bro. They're the same. All right. Well, I call BS because we all know in the real life, we're all taking A all day. I'm taking A. Come on. We're going to take A left and right. Why? Because our psychology is attached to the low-hanging fruit. We want to go after 
the hot and ready listings, the hot and ready buyers that are ready to buy now. And naturally, we tend to go away and not consider the long-term prospects, someone that we want to work with. So let's redefine what a prospect is, okay? Buyer B is a lead. And if you're wondering why Ricky said both, it's because he doesn't discriminate based on time frame. As long as you're a human being and you have a pulse and you plan on buying or selling over the next 100 years, Ricky will add you to his database. And that's what I want everyone to start understanding and doing. However, the difference between buyer B and buyer A is motivation. And buyer A is not a lead. That's a hot and ready prospect. So let's define what a prospect is. A prospect is a lead that is ready to buy or sell in the next 90 days. And if we're giving the people what they want, or in this scenario, the agents what they want, let's be real. None of us want leads. The next time you're going out there and you're asking your mentor or your team leader or your broker owner, hey, can you give me leads? Change what you're asking them. Tell them you want prospects because what you really want are people that are ready to buy or sell in the next 90 days. Now, imagine a world where prospects just fell from the sky. You went out there and 10 listings just called you and said, hey, Johnny, I got to sell my house. Hey, Marley, I want to sell my house today. Wouldn't the job just be so easy? Well, it would be. And unfortunately, it doesn't happen that way. So there's a little spoiler alert, okay? And I want everyone to really understand this epiphany I'm about to give you. Every single lead or human being that you built a relationship with will turn into a future prospect. I don't care if it's the old lady that says she'll never sell her house. One day she's going to be forced to sell because when you die, you can't take the house with you. That's an estate. Everyone that tells you I'm not ready to sell at some point has to sell. And for all those people that are in your marketplace, if they're not ready to buy, well, they may have friends, family, cousins, who knows that are going to refer you business in the future. So I'm going to make this even more simple because Ricky said, no, we got to make this as simple that an eighth grader could go ahead and read this. So I said, okay, we're going to take humans. Does everyone know what a human is? Go ahead and give me a thumbs up if you know what a human looks like. All right, everyone, everyone's got that. Okay, cool. So we know what a human is. Well, when you take a human and you get their name, contact info, and you build rapport with them, they turn into a lead. You now want to take that lead, put it into your database, and you want to follow up with them as their motivation increases with time. Why? Because humans go through life events, which could include marriage or could include divorce. Both great reasons to buy and sell. Humans could go out there and have children, or their children could go away to college. Great reasons to buy or sell. Or humans could die. Let's be real. And when they have to die, well, they have to sell as well. So at some point, every single lead in your marketplace will become a prospect as long as you follow up with them throughout that time period. So go, just to prove a point, I call my good friend, David Blaine. And I said, David, I'll give you a hundred bucks. I want you to throw this deck of cards in the air and I'm going to capture it in still time. And he did. And the magic is in the follow-up. Your issue is not that you don't have enough leads because leads are infinite. They're literally humans. Your issue is that you do not follow up with people if they are not ready to buy or sell immediately. I want everyone to understand what I just said. And it's the reason Ricky does so well. I do so well. My coach does so well. And every top millionaire agent in the country does so well. We are aware that 99.99% of people we speak to are not going to be ready to buy or sell immediately. So we implement badass follow-up systems and nurturing campaigns to stay in touch with them over a 10-year period. And what ends up happening is magic, okay? Get ready for this. So I'm going to give everyone a 65-point follow-up campaign. It's the equivalent of Ricky's with some text and voice thrown in there. So who here has heard Ricky literally talk about his weekly newsletter? Why is this a complete game changer? It's because it's 52 reasons to get in front of people every single week. The content of the newsletter doesn't even matter that much. We all get so caught up with, I don't know what to put in there. Oh my goodness, I don't have the perfect newsletter. No one cares about what you put in there. It could be two sentences and a picture of what you ate at a restaurant last week. As long as you make it personal and you're trying to connect to people and add value, that's all people want to see so that they don't unsubscribe. And what you're doing is you're cementing yourself in their brain as their realtor of choice. So very simply put, you're going to send out a weekly newsletter once a week. That's 52 touches a year. If you need a template of mine or Ricky's, 
um, just reach out to us on Instagram right after this call. Um, next, you want to send out a monthly holiday text. This month, we have New Year's. Following month, we have Valentine's Day. Following month after that, we have uh, St. Patrick's Day. These are excuses to text people instead of just reaching out to them and saying, hey, you're ready to buy or sell. You just wish them a happy holiday. And if you have an application like KV Core, you could leverage KV Core to go out of your way to just send out a mass text blast. Okay. Next, last but not least, you're going to do a yearly call or a yearly voicemail blast. If you have 10,000 plus people in your database, like me and Ricky do, you're probably not going to have time to sit down there and call every single person in there. But what you can do is if you leverage a platform like KV Core or there's other voicemail software um, uh, that you could go out there and pay for, uh, you could send out a mass voicemail blast to everyone in your newsletter and it'll sound something like this. Hey, John, this is Juan Carlos with eXp Realty. I'm just reaching out to let you know that I'm thinking about you. We haven't spoken in a while. Hope you're getting my newsletter and my text. But if you need anything related to real estate, please give me a call. And you'll feel the actual amounts of responses you get ASAP. Trust me, this thing just works like a charm. So those are 65 ways to follow up with people on autopilot, and they take less than 20 minutes a week. So back to the sales algorithm, because you wanted to get this even simpler, the number of leads that are going to be in your database are just going to be simple for your database size. And how will you convert those leads is how will you implement the 65 point campaign? And how many signed clients you get is going to lead to how many referrals you get. So if you want to go out there and sell more real estate and get more referrals, increase your database every single day and implement the 65 point campaign. And I already hear your questions. Does it have to be 65.1? No, it doesn't marry, but anything's better than not reaching out to them at all. So even if it's a 10 point, 20 point, 30 point, 100 point, I don't know, do something. You want to nurture that. Okay. So secret number two, doppelganger Juan is back. It means write this down. The 1% rule. The 1% rule states that the total number of leads in your database multiplied times 1%. Okay, is going to equal the yearly number of referrals that you get. So I know I lost a couple of people there. I'm going to go ahead and explain it again. If your database has 1,200 contacts, you're going to multiply that times 1% to see how many referrals that database is going to generate over the course of a year. So if you go out there and put 1,200 uh, referrals, uh, data, uh, yeah, yeah. One more time, if you put 1,200 contacts into your database, you can expect that over the following 12 months, if you're nurturing it correctly, you're going to generate 12 referrals. If you have 10,000 people in your database at 1%, you could expect 100 yearly referrals over the next 12 months. Just to give everyone um, some statistics on this, I currently have 15,200 people in my database as of this morning. And at 1%, I should be closing 150 transactions this year. Well, I'm closing 140. And... That's around 97% accuracy. So I've tested this with the top agents all across the country. It's always on point. I think Ricky is right around between the 10,000 to 20,000 mark. And he's closing 100 deals a year for the last, what, seven years? So this thing works. You want to get more referrals, increase your database, and implement these nurturing campaigns. So now that we have the formulas, let's put it all together. In order to make more money, we need to close more deals. I hope you all knew that. And in order to close more deals, we need to get more contracts out. And in order to get more contracts out, well, we got to submit more offers. And in order to submit more offers, we got to do more showings. And more showings come from more clients. More clients come from more prospects. More prospects come from more leads. And what is a lead? People. And what's the one saying Ricky always says? Deals are infinite. Do you know what he means when he says that? All he is saying is that people are infinite and people are the direct source of deals, okay? So quit chasing the deal, chase the relationship instead. Watch how your business changes form. Watch how your life changes. Watch how your anxiety goes away from not having to convert for sale by owners and expireds like a crazy person. My business is so much more organic that yesterday, I got a really nice call from Josephine and Jose. There's someone that I sold the house to three years ago. They've been on my nurturing campaign for three years and they reached out to me and said, hey, Juan, we want to sell our house and buy in another state. Uh, can you go ahead and help us out with that? I told them my commission is this. This is what's going to happen. And they said, send me over the paperwork. They weren't saying they were going to interview three or four people. They weren't trying to fight me down and negotiate my commission. They weren't trying to go out of their way 
to cause problems for me because they knew me and they trusted me. So when you chase the relationship and you build trust through nurturing that, whether it's one month or one year, I guarantee you, your business will be looking completely different than the person trying to build a business off Facebook ads for sell by owners, expires, and converting people that are hot and ready to sell. Okay. So in conclusion, the more we focus on building genuine relationships with people, rather than only looking for our next deal, the faster we start generating more referrals and more referrals equals more income. So in order to scale up from zero to six figures, you're going to do the following three things. Number one, you're going to put the majority of your time and energy into income producing activities. Does anyone remember what they are? I'll give you a quick acronym, PFC. And it doesn't stand for PF Changs. It stands for prospecting, follow-up, and consultations. Three hours a day, all day, every day, for at least the first three, four years in the business. If you're not doing that, then what are you doing? Okay. Number two, rinse and repeat. Okay. I'm not exaggerating. You want to prospect, follow up, and do consultations every single day. Keep doing that. And number three, wait. My entire schedule revolves around income producing activities. Right here, you're going to get a sample millionaire agent schedule. And as you can see, PFC is at the actual core of my entire day to day. So I wake up every single day at six. From six to nine, I have a routine. This routine includes meditation, prayer, journaling affirmations, goal setting, working out, breakfast, and showering. From 9 to 11, I prospect. From 11 to 12, I eat. From 12 to 2, I go ahead and reserve those slots for consultations. 2 to 3, lunch. And then 3 to 4 and 4 to 5 are reserved for more consultations or showings, aka servicing the client. But if you look at this entire routine, you don't see anything in there aside from the PFC. So I want you to understand if you're not closing enough deals, it's because you're not doing this enough. You're not working hard enough. And I know what you're thinking, but Juan, I went out and I door knocked 10 doors last week and I didn't get a single client. Juan, I tried cold calling for two weeks. I didn't get any results. Try cold calling or door knocking for three years straight, three hours a day. And if you don't get a client, then come give me a call. It's not that we're doing the wrong action. It's that we're not doing nearly enough of it, okay? When you go out there and tell me I cold call for two weeks and I still haven't gotten a result, it's like you telling me you've been doing 10 pushups a day for two weeks and you don't have a six pack yet. I'm gonna laugh at you. I'm gonna say it's ridiculous. It takes two years to get a six pack doing it at that rate. So give it more time or do more of it on a daily level. So back to this. I already hear what you're saying, trust me. I've taught this class before. Juan, I don't got all that time. I have kids. I have a husband. I have a spouse. I have a part-time job. I got to go do all my other realtor activities. I get it. Listen, I've been there as well. We run into one final issue. Does anyone know here what a dinosaur is? I hate to ask this question, but some people don't know what a dinosaur is. Go ahead and put into a chat. Give me a thumbs up if you know what a dinosaur is. Okay. Well, Dinosaurs, which was the giant reptilian lizards back in the day, they ended up going extinct. And the reason they went extinct is because their population size kept going up. And over time, they continued growing. But at some point in history, there was a bottleneck event. And I'm not going to get into politics, whether it was a media or something else that killed the dinosaurs. But whatever this event was, it caused the dinosaurs to go extinct. Now, doesn't this look a little bit familiar? Well, let's check the agent graph out. If you look at agents in the beginning, they're always at that point where they're going out there and they're scaling their business. And over time, well, naturally agents get more clients and they go from making 10K a year to 50K to 80 to 100 to 200 and boom, right around year five, six, seven, or eight, they hit $300,000 in gross commissions. Now, this could vary from market to market. It could be 150 for you or a million for the next. But usually anywhere between 150 to 300,000, something happens. I call it the bottleneck. And what happens is that you get to the point where you have so many clients that you don't have time to go out there and continue prospecting. And so what ends up happening is you hit a plateau when you stay in this plateau for the next two, three, four, five, six years until one day you say, I am tired of this. And I'm going to hire an assistant. And instead of going extinct or staying at the same plateau, 
where you bring on leverage. And congratulations, you've now graduated to the next level. So secret number four, the scaling formula and how to get to seven figures. If you see doppelganger Juan, you know what that means. Start writing this down. So I'm going to give everyone the entire scaling formula. So everyone's going to start out at $0, okay? When you get into this business, unfortunately, no one gives us listings. So we have to go out there and work for it. And how do we define work? PFC, prospect follow-up and consultations. If you listen to me and you listen to Ricky and you actually go out there and work, not just complain and try to find a secret funnel or a secret technology company that's going to send you seller leads or try to go out there and invent some other system like there has been people out there who have tried that. Um, you're going to get to that point where eventually you'll get to $100,000 in gross commissions. And you could do that in a year. I've had agents, brand new agents do that in six months. I've also had other agents do it in 10 years. doesn't matter. Everyone has their own schedule. So you go out there and work and you work until you're making $100,000 a year. Right around the point where you get to $100K to $300,000 in gross commissions, you will start feeling the 40, 50, 60, 70 hour weeks, open houses, buyer showings, contracts, transaction management. You know all those things that you don't want to do? Well, it's a result of you doing the work. It's not a bad thing. So if you're feeling burnt out or you're getting to the point of burnout, realize it's a good thing. It's mean you've made progress. You're not doing something wrong. You've done the work and now you're going ahead and reaping the benefits. What are the benefits? More money. But the more money you make, the more hours you're going to work. So what you now have to do is implement leverage. And the first person you're going to hire, if you've been listening to me, is an admin. No more are the days that you do MLS, paperwork, transaction management, DocuSign, photography descriptions, all that stuff. We're going to hand it off to admin, okay? And then afterwards, you're going to hire a showing agent. Why? Because opening and closing a door, as luxurious as you may think it is, anyone could do it. No offense. So when you go out there and you bring on a showing agent and an admin, you're going to get back at least 40 hours of your time per week. And then you're going to be like, Juan, just hanging out, making money in your sleep. Wrong. You're going to get back to work. Now that you've brought up more time, you can now prospect, follow up, and do more consultations. Sounds boring? It's because it is boring. No one said this would be fun. Next, you go out there and now you're working more hours, but you have an admin and showing agent in place to go out there and help you scale your business. And you're going to rinse and repeat this to get to around four hundred dollars to $700,000 a year in gross commissions. Okay? And once you get to the point where you're around the five, six, 700K mark, you know what's going to happen again? You're going to get burnt out again. You're back to 40, 50, 60, 70 hours a week. So what do you do? You get more leverage. But I'm not talking about hiring agents. I'm talking about promoting your admin to an operations manager and hiring a second admin for them. Once you have your second admin, you're going to go out there and get your first buyer agent. And when I mean buyer agent, I don't mean they're just going to go out there and show houses. Now they're going to PFC as well. And you're going to teach them the same habits that made you successful on their side. You're going to teach them how to prospect, follow up, and do consultations. So does anyone know where you get your first buyer agent from? Go ahead and put it into chat. I want to see if you're paying attention. Where do you find your first buyer agent that you bring into your company? Your admin becomes your buyer agent? Nope. Oh, wow. We got some people listening along. Showing agent. That is absolutely correct. You're going to promote the showing agent to buyer agent. Because if they've been doing this correctly over the last six or 12 months, they've probably mastered showings at this point, and they're going to be a phenomenal buyer agent. And then the listing agent is going to be you. You're going to do anything about listings. Isn't that what you wanted? Well, here's the thing. You could rinse and repeat this till you get to your target goal, whether it's a million, $2 million, or $3 million a year in gross commissions. And at some point, if you want to be like myself and even outsource the listing side of things, you could do that as well. So I want everyone to understand that this is the formula that I followed and even Ricky's followed. And Ricky talks about not having a team, but he does have a team. He has two rock star assistants that go ahead and leverage his entire business on the back end. So that the only thing he's doing is really showing houses and he doesn't have to work anymore. Why? Because he worked for 10 years straight building his database. So the only thing Ricky does at this point is show houses and submit offers. And his assistant and his backend staff do the same. So I want you to understand whether you want to be a single agent rock star like Ricky, or you want to run a nine person team like I do, this is still the exact path that you have to follow to get there. Okay. So back to leverage. Leverage comprises of two things, systems and people. 
Systems can be concluded as far as CRM goes. My preferred CRM is KB Core. Software to help you automate your business and automation tools that all allow you to go out there and do things in your sleep. Leverage comes in two forms of people, staff and virtual assistants. Local staff is great when you want them to have a lot of responsibility and you want them to be on call for certain items. And virtual assistants are phenomenal if you're just starting out. Me and my team hire virtual assistants for as little as three, four, five dollars an hour. Um, so VAs are a great option if you don't have enough money to go out there and pay someone full time. Now, my systems, as mentioned, include KB Core. Uh, another system I really like is Follow Up Boss. I think Follow Up Boss and KB Core are the two best CRMs out there, and they allow for tons of automation and software to be integrated. The software I use for project management and tracking all of my deal pipeline and checking in on my managers and going out there and seeing if my assistants are doing the right thing is Asana. And then the automation I use to zap people from my website whenever someone inquires about a property or things like that to my database is Zapier. And it can be integrated into KB Core. And then my people. I have an entire infrastructure of virtual assistants managing the entire backend of the real estate process for me. I have an operations manager. I have a client relations manager which takes all of our phone calls and book showing for my agents. And I have a sales manager which trains and manages my entire team. Those nine buyer agents and listing agents report to the sales manager. And Juan is at the top as the chief expansion officer helping others grow. Okay, so that's my entire system. That's the backend. So the seven-figure producer combines number one through three. Secret number one, the law of millionaire agents. Don't forget your ABCs and your PFCs. Secret number two, the real estate sales formula and how to use it. And secret number three, the 1% rule and why it matters. So if you want to go ahead and make this simple, if you want to go out there and scale your business, implement all of these formulas into the equation. And for 2022, where we will leave off is I want you to write down what your yearly goal is next year as far as closed transactions go. And I'll go ahead and say, let's say you use a sample number of 50. If you want to make this even more simple, all you have to do is multiply the number of deals you want to close next year by 100. And that's how many people you need to have in your database in order to get there. So if you want to close 50 deals next year, you got to add 5,000 people in your database. And remember, they all have to be nurtured through a 30, 40, 50, or 65 point campaign. If you want to close 100 deals next year, then just put 10,000 in there. Or if you want to go out there and just close 10 deals next year, then you have to put 1,200. Now, the average person I speak to can usually add about five contacts a day. Five contacts a day multiplied five days a week, Monday through Friday is 25 contacts a week, which comes out to 100 contacts a month, which adds up to 1,200 contacts a year. So as long as you're adding five contacts a day, you will increase your business from year one, 10, 10 deals, year two, 20 deals, year three, 30 deals, and it keeps going up by 10. But once you grow this business, it's your business. These clients trust you. They, no one can take them away from you. And it's an entirely different mindset. If you want to grow faster, then add 10 contacts a day, 15 contacts a day. Heck, there's an agent on this call who probably added 30 or 40 contacts a day. You could do this as fast as you want to do it. It took me five years to get to 15,000. So in order to scale from zero to seven figures before I lose my voice, oh my goodness. Number one, you're going to continue focusing on building relationships, aka prospecting. I can't stress this enough. No one on this call prospects enough, okay? Instead of prospecting five or six calls a day, start making two to three hours of phone calls a day. That should yield at least 20, 30 contacts. And of the 20, 30 contacts, if you could get five or 10 of them as far as information goes, phenomenal. Number two, implement leverage when you hit a plateau. Trust me, you will feel it. You'll stop sleeping at night. You'll suffer from anxiety. You get to that point where you're juggling 25 things at once and your partner is calling you and saying, why don't I ever see you anymore? Well, that's kind of a little green flag to go out and implement some leverage. And number three, rinse and repeat while carefully managing your profit and expenses. When you start hiring people, make sure the hiring doesn't get out of hand. You are now employing others and that could mean to added expenses and lower margins. So just make sure you don't hire too quickly and you hire gradually. Okay, so it sounds simple, right? And that's because it is. Now, is it easy? Absolutely not. There's a reason we call it the 1% club. It's because 99% of agents can't get there because it's so brutally hard. It requires discipline. It requires focus. It requires sheer grit that regardless of what happens and how many people curse you out and how many people get in your way, you don't stop on your daily target of 5, 10, 15 contacts a day. Okay. Now, if it was easy, everyone would do it. 
And that's the good part. If you could go out there and start reading and putting yourself in a position to grow, you could literally go out there and achieve whatever you want to do. So before we get into the questions, um, go ahead and follow me on Instagram. Um, I'm going to go ahead and share the email newsletter with everyone that reaches out to me via email. So if you want to go out there and get the email newsletter, send me an email at quantigoldbarteam.com. I'll send you my, my template and just make the subject line email newsletter. Um, once again, I am in New York and Florida. So if you ever need any um, agents down there that are absolutely phenomenal at what they do, please consider me for your referrals. And last but not least, follow me on Instagram. Let's connect. Um, let's see how we can work together long term. Quick little giveaway. I'm going to go ahead and put a copy of this slide deck into the chat. And then right there, everyone can go ahead and review this entire presentation from start to finish for free. You can revert back to this and um, you could go ahead and implement them to your business as things go on. So let's get into the Q&A of things. I want to hear all your questions. I know there was a couple of questions on assistance, stuff like that. And we'll start knocking it away. So first question by Nild. I'm hoping I'm saying that correctly. Um, can you share what work and tasks you gave your admin when they started? Three things. Let's make it super simple. I do have a, a checklist of 35 things that my assistant does. But the three things are very important. Number one, anything that has to do with paperwork. I do never want to know my login when it comes to MLS or Skyslope or dot loop ever again. So paperwork is number one. Number two, start taking all of my calls from my listings. Those calls are probably the biggest distraction of anything in your entire life. You have no idea how many times I was busy working with a client or busy being productive. And then boom, I get a random agent from XYZ Realty saying, hey, Juan, is your property still available? And then I got to go on the MLS and show them show. It's just such a distraction to have them take all your calls. And number three, have them take whatever is taking up the most amount of your time that has nothing to do with PFC and take that off your plate. Okay. Um, is an admin a transaction coordinator? I would say so. Uh, a transaction coordinator is doing some of the majority of the items that a, a full service admin would do. But yes, TC is going to be the first thing you do. Um, how do you pay an admin? I pay them hourly. So check your local minimum wage in your town and pay the minimum wage plus a bonus based on production. And you can bump them up over time. Um, virtual assistants, I pay between anywhere between three to $5 an hour. And if you need any information on virtual assistants, uh, I'll go ahead and put a Calendly link in there. You can set up a, um, a link for my scheduling manager. And they'll go ahead and tell you um, what they could do as far as helping you find the VA goes. Ricky also has a VA service for ISAs, and we will connect you with them as well on that side. Um, what other questions we have? Uh, does this work if you do real estate part-time? Absolutely. I started out as a full-time agent because I had the luxury of living at home, but 95% of agents start out part-time. So there's no excuse out there. If you have half the hours a week to, uh, uh, per week to work this, then just take half of the hours that you're prospecting and do it on your part-time schedule. What kind of funnel do you use? Um, I am mean, finding it hard to keep track of people. KV Core is my database. A funnel is you driving traffic to a landing page and then converting them to go into your database. Too complicated. Let's just stick to phone calls, building relationships, networking, stuff like that. Um, I use KV Core for my database. How do you pay showing agents? I recommend paying them per door that they show, 10, 15, 20 bucks. That'll cover their gas and give them a little bit more. Um, so if someone is showing 15 houses a week for you and you pay them 10 bucks to 20 bucks each, you're probably going to end up paying them between 150 to $300 a week. And it'll give you back 20, 30, 40 hours a week of your time. Not only that, but I recommend hiring a brand new agent, someone with a blank canvas, because they don't even care about the money. They care more about the experience and them going out of their way to learn more. Um, let's see what other questions we have. What's a fair split when you get to that level for the buyer agent? I always start them up on a 50-50 and depending on how much value you want to give them. Are you doing their transaction management? Are you doing their marketing? Are you paying for their photography? Are you going out there and doing their branding and their listings and all of that stuff? You want to go ahead and charge the split based on value. My team members are all in a 50-50 split, no cap. And trust me, none of them complain. Why? Because I give them so much value that they see that it's worth more to pay me 50% than to go out there and build their own systems. Um, please type email. I'll go ahead and type the email and everyone for the chat. What are the questions we got going? I know this was a ton of information, so I'll put the link in here as well as far as the, um, the training goes. So everyone could go ahead and rewatch that. Um, if you go ahead and email me, email newsletter, I will reply back, not just with the video, but the slides for the presentations as well. Um, when you use the showing agent, don't you lose opportunity to build a relationship with your client? No, I tell the client from day one, listen, I'm gonna connect with my showing agent, Aaron. 
And the reason I'm not doing the showing myself is because where you want me is negotiating and getting you the lowest price for this house. You don't want me going out there and opening a door. Aaron is a professional. He can show up a house better than I can. But where you want me is in marketing your house the right way to get you top dollar or negotiating your house to get you the lowest price. You do want the lowest price, Nancy, right? There you go. Um, anything else as far as questions go? Link for the deck. As mentioned, I will go ahead and send that to you if you send me email newsletter and the subject line to my email. Um, is KV Core a funnel? No, KV Core is a database. It's a CRM um, that you could go ahead and, um, and, and what do you call it? Um, add your contacts to, text them, voicemail blast, email newsletter. It's a one-stop shop. It's the only software I use. If you're with eXp Realty, um, it gives you the ability to basically get it for free. So if you're not part of eXp, um, that's another reason to go ahead and join right there. And if you have any questions on that, reach out to me or any other eXp agents on this call or Ricky as well. Um, any other questions? Um, I have one, Juan. Yes. What, um, what do you do for your multiple states? How, you, yeah. how, how do you manage them? Because I'm dual licensed in Texas and in Colorado. Great question. So I am currently selling in New York and Florida. However, because of the eXp platform, I actually don't have to be licensed in Florida to sell. So I have a team in Florida and I manage it just as if it's a team in New York. Nothing changes. We have the same software. Everything is linked in. My assistant in New York manages my transaction and my marketing for my team in Florida. The only thing you have to train is your assistant on how to go out there and learn the contracts in a different state or market. But as far as your business goes, nothing changes. There's still humans in Texas as there is in, in another market, right? Yeah. So do you, but do you have gold bar registered in, in Florida and in New Gold bars are brands. Um, I have my LLC in New York. My branding, all of that stuff is on my website, um, but there's no registering it because through eXp, the eXp is the broker on record. So Gold Bar is a global brand, but there's no need to register, get insurance, get an office in any other market. I purely don't believe in expanding and getting an office everywhere you go. Um, I put my agents on my email too for referrals. Um, something Rachel just brought up is maybe 20% of all my referral business comes from agents in other states. So I highly recommend you stick your agents on, on those newsletters as well. And something that's very important with the newsletters, please do not be that agent that goes ahead and starts sending out newsletters on here is the local mortgage interest rates in your market. Click here to find out an evaluation on what your home is worth. 10 different ideas you could do to get top dollar for your house. No one cares. Make it fun, make it exciting, make it humorous. What did you do that week? What was something wacky that happened at a showing? What was the last cool restaurant that you went to or place that you visited to? Um, maybe if you have children, your children went out there and they started doing something funny. Like you want to go out there and you want to make it very personal so that when you're going out there and just sending out these newsletters, they're not going to feel like they have to unsubscribe. They see like they're getting an inside look of your life and your business, but you're not talking about real estate. They know you're in real estate already, but remember, no one cares about hearing real estate 24 seven. That's just us. As agents, we want to talk real estate 24 7, 24. We're obsessed. We're kind of crazy people if you think about that. But the rest of the humanity, they don't care about real estate until they're ready to buy or sell. To put it into perspective, if you don't believe me, it's like a dentist talking to you about a root canal every single week for the rest of your life. At some point, you're going to block that. They're going to get pretty annoying. But my mother's a dentist. And let me tell you, that's the only stuff they talk about. Oh my God, you look at the molar from the 26th, that root canal was horrendous. Imagine they started talking to us like that. We think they're nuts. So, an agent on this call I talked to with hosted an open house this weekend, and there was a full-grown pig sleeping in on one of the bedrooms. I want that. I want to see that newsletter. Take a picture of that. That's awesome. I, I subscribe to that. Um, any other questions? I'll go ahead and put my Instagram handle once again right there. You can reach out to me if you have any questions moving forward. Um, as you may or may not already know, Tyler is expanding his team on a nationwide level with eXp. Um, if you are more interested in learning the model, reach out to Tyler after this call. And if you join Tyler, you join Ricky, you join myself, you join our entire organization. Um, we do these trainings weekly for free. And our goal is to go out there and help everyone scale and build their own agency. I don't believe in us going out there and building agents or building individual agents that are going to have to do this for the rest of their life. I am truly um, someone that believes that every agent deserves their own brokerage and their own company. And this is a model where we could go out there and help other people. Other than that, I'm always available for free coaching and training. Hit up Ricky, hit up Tyler. Um, 
hit up Rachel, Stephanie. We're always willing to give back on these calls. Um, any last questions before we go ahead and uh, we end off for the day? Okay, so one last thing before we wrap up is 2022. You may be thinking, well, Juan, where's the business plan? I just gave you the macroeconomics of the entire business platform. It's on you now to go out there and take these formulas and set your goals. I have a goal for 2022. My personal goal is to do $250 million worth of real estate sales. Why? Because I'm doing about 90 million this year. And I want to say I did a quarter billion dollars in a single calendar year. So what am I doing? I am going ahead and I'm calculating my average price range. I'm dividing it by the 250 million mark. And I'm going to see that I have to 